Hi everybody, it's Mrs. Peachy from your physical science class and I'm doing this uh, video tutorial to show you how to do the first portfolio that we have, the Introduction to Scientific Inquiry. So if you look at the screen with me, um, you'll notice that the first portfolio is found in the course tree on the left hand side of the screen. If you can't see that course tree, you just need to click on this little purple arrow here and that will reveal that side. So that's kind of kind of show you all the lessons that you have to do and in the order that you have to do them. The other way that you can get to um, the course tree of course is to go to your planner and you can access any lesson in physical science through your planner. So I could click right on this in the planner and that would open up the same lesson. Okay, so now you can see here this lab is the Introduction to Scientific Inquiry. And since my, my window is a little bit smaller than the actual screen, kind of shrink it to fit it a little bit better, but I'm going to go ahead and move forward through this until I get to um, the link that's going to take us to the actual portfolio itself. <coughs> Okay, so first of all, this green box where it says modification, that's one I do not want you to do. You won't be doing the modification. You'll be doing the first one up here that says Introduction to Scientific Inquiry. So if I click on that, that's going to take us to a um, PDF in which you can write in this PDF. And you can use this grid here to create a graph, which is, is kind of a pain, actually. So rather than putting the graph in the PDF, I would highly recommend that you turn in a separate file with a graph, either a graph that you've done by hand, hand and scanned it in, or a graph that you can do using Microsoft Word or uh, Microsoft Excel and include that. It is kind of a pain to do it on the PDF, so I'm not going to show you how to do that today. When I go back to the lesson, you will notice that there is also a link to Boyle's Law and Charles Law, which brings us to a gizmo. And this is what you're going to complete for your portfolio. So it kind of shows looking like this and um, gives you some assessment questions. So I want to go to lesson info up here and I am going to um, I can click on the student exploration sheet and that's going to give me more information on this gizmo and walk you through the steps of what to do. Oops, sorry, that was the wrong window. I'm going to try this one more time because it's not showing me what I would like it to. Oh, now it came up. I don't know why that was the case, but the first time that I clicked on it, I did not get the simulation. I just got the, um, the actual questions and stuff like that. So I think maybe it didn't load correctly that first time. So the first time I just had these assessment questions, I actually have had that issue um, come up a couple of times students have told me about. So if that does happen to you, it seemed to resolve itself just by me reloading the page. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to actually be doing this as your, your portfolio. So you're not going to imagine an activity. You're not going to do something at home with this activity. You're actually going to be using the simulation. 
So you will be doing, if you go into under lesson info and you go to the student exploration sheet, you will be doing activity B like boy. So you can skip A. And you're going to do activity B. And your question is, how does temperature affect the volume of gas? So you need to form a hypothesis here, okay? And your hypothesis, remember, is an if-then because statement. So you will decide how you think temperature affects the volume of a gas and then come up with a reasoning as to why you think that. And your because shouldn't be because I read it in the book. It should be something that is a physical property of what's going on and how that might explain why your hypothesis should be true. Okay, so for example, you might say, um, to use a totally different example here, so I'm not kind of giving you the information, but you might say, um, if I lower the temperature of a liquid, it will turn into a solid because as the molecules slow down and become closer, bonds form between them. So it's giving you kind of a physical process that might explain why what is happening is actually happening. Um, I'm going to bring up that PDF that I had for you a minute ago. So let's just kind of go back to that lesson real quick. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that one more time just to bring that t PDF in that's typable because this is what you're actually physically turning into me. Okay, so this is where you're going to put your if then because statement. Remember, this has to do with Boyle's law and Charles' law as viewed on the gizmo, not about a ball and things like that because that's what the previous question is more of a hypothetical question. Then you're going to design an experiment. Now, how might you test Boyle's and Charles' law in real life? So this is where you might come up with an experiment that mimics what you're doing in the virtual lab, but do it in the real world. Now, you don't have to actually do this, but you're just going to um, tell me how you might do that. It asks for B, the manipulated variable, and C, the responding variable. Some of you might know these as the independent and the dependent variables. I prefer the terms um, manipulated and responding because they make more sense. Manipulated is the thing that you will change and responding is what changes as a result of what you've changed. So for example, in my earlier analogy, I'm changing the temperature and what happens is um, the state of matter of the material I'm working with, either it, you know, it freezes or um, changes it into a solid, okay? So what I did was change the temperature. What happened was it turned into a solid. Again, you're doing something with changing pressure, pressure or temperature and kind of seeing how those two are related to one another. But that's a different example that I gave. It also talks about qualitative versus quantitative data. Qualitative data are observations that you make that cannot be quantified. They can't be put into a numerical um, expression. So what do you see? What do you feel um, here? What does it smell like? Obviously, you can't do that for something that's on a gizmo, but you can see the behavior of the molecules in your gizmo. Quantitative are things that are going to be able to be measured. You can measure things like temperature and pressure. So you can put those in number form and you can put those in a data table. And also here you would include um, the graph of your data. So whatever data you give me in the analyze and conclude, um, oops, excuse me, in the collecting and analyzing data part, the quantitative data, you would then put in graphical form here. But remember, I much prefer you sending in a separate document with your data table and your graph than to try to put it in this PDF because it really gets very messy. 
qualitative data observations here. And then you're going to use this graph to interpret the data. So you should be able to extrapolate or and interpolate. Those are two words that are hard to say. Let me try that again. Extrapolate, interpolate. So if you are interpolating your data, that means you can, you can find where a data point might be on the graph, even though one doesn't exist. So you're going to look at the line that you've made, and you should be able to see what might happen at a particular point on that line, even though you actually didn't take a physical measurement. If you're extrapolating your data, that just means if you continue that line trend, if it continues trending beyond the graph itself, you can determine what will happen in the future or in a later time. Okay, and finally, you are going to do the drawing conclusions and the communicating part. Um, remember to put a lot of detail and thought into these parts of the lab report as well, because they are also, you know, a big part of the grade. So again, remember, you are using the gizmo here to gather your data. You are not actually filling up a ball and putting it outside overnight and checking the temperature and the pressure, because those things might be too difficult for us to do in a controlled manner at school. Many people don't um, have pressure gauges and stuff in which they can do that at home. Um, you can select masses here to increase the pressure. Okay. You can also, I think you can just type in masses. And you can... Um, kind of look at the way in which the molecules move. Oh, excuse me. For your qualitative data. And down here, it's going to show you the pressure and the temperature. Okay? It's also going to show you volume, but volume is one that, you know, we're decreasing, so that should be increasing pressure, right? But as you can see here, the temperature never really changes. So you're going to be looking at a relationship between pressure and volume. Those are the two variables. Okay? If you have any questions or concerns with this portfolio, or you are unsure, for example, how to do a, um, a graph on a uh, Microsoft office document, feel free to give me a call at 2204 is my extension, or you can send me a webmail message. I hope you all have a great day, and thanks for watching.